this is the slow wardrobe. Come and have a look. Hello, welcome to episode 93 of the Slow Wardrobe podcast. My name is Linda and I'm your host. In this episode, uh, there'll be a shortish update on my latest knitting antics, almost finished object right next to me, followed by a layer cake section where I introduce a new length of layer cake duster, a medium length in between the short and the long that we already had. And I show uh, how to style that and how it goes in terms of length and flow with the other layer cakes. So, and that includes the new play suits. So, starting off first, my knitting. As you can see next to me, this second uh, installment of the cardigan that I knitted um, earlier this spring in the um, Malabrigo Finito yarn that is, alas, discontinued. Um, this second one is again knitted in the Malabrigo Finito, some colors that I managed to get hold of. And I then just pushed myself to come up with a use of those colors that worked in, in one garment. I'm really pleased with the result. And I realized in the course of knitting it that the yarn in terms of um, gauge and very similar in terms of um, drape as well, um, goes quite well with the Yak Blend 2 that's right behind me here on the wall. So similar running length, similar gauge, similar colors already. So um, I got requests for a pattern for these little cardigans already because they go so well with layer cake. They look like a precious little extra accessory on top of a full layer cake. So that's what I'm gonna do. It'll be there in four different sizes is the plan. The sizes corresponding with the four layer cake sizes. This will be a size one and then there'll be one size smaller and two sizes bigger. So it's zero, one, two and three. Um, fitting a range of UK sizes with all of them. So all of them will have a bit of positive ease. That's all future talk though, because the pattern will have to be graded and then probably test knitted as well. So we're probably looking at autumn time by the time this is released, but still that would be quite nice timing, of course, because the new knitting season will be starting then when it comes to more woolly garments. And this is definitely going to be a woolly warmer garment. So where I'm at with it is that I've finished both sleeves. They're ever so slightly longer than the sleeves on the first sample, purely because of how the stripes end up working out and wanting to, of course, finish mid stripes so that I have the little baubles at the end, mirroring the baubles that are in the stripes in the garment. And um, I think I said last time that I was not going to make the uh, uh, dorset buttons like I did with the first garment because I figured they the garment, the, the, uh, the button placement might interfere with the horizontal lines. But then, of course, I realized that I could line them up like that because you know I decide where the buttonholes go after all. So that's exactly what I've done. I've lined up the buttons and the buttonholes with the um, horizontal lines of the, um, the, the, the little cherries going around. And all I've got left to do now, I've actually cut the stick and I have um, secured the stitches with this in the stick. I'm just using a length of my three ply linen for that, which um, and then I, I actually had so a chain stitch, which I think is a wonderful way to secure it. And it it gives it a nice firm base as well. Of course, it takes the uh, stretch out of that edge, most of the stretch out of that edge because I'm working in linen. Um, and because there is a chain stitch, there's a little bit, just a tiny bit of stretch left. So it's not completely solid. And I have chosen a um, 
another wonderful ribbon from Magia Textile Garden. It's actually amazing that at some point last year I bought three or four, more or less random, three or four of the um, uh, ribbons that she had online at the time and I didn't use them with specific uh, projects in mind but one by one I've been able to use them on projects that I'm knitting including this lovely ribbon. I'll show you a picture with a close-up of it of these little fairies and um, uh, dotted around these beautiful uh, toadstools which of course have um, the, the 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 red ones with white with the white dots which of course goes beautifully with this background of um, my little red cherries so and then there's green in it and that green comes back in the white stripe so it's such a good match that that's what I'm going to hand sew over the edge of my folded back steak. So that will that's what the inside is going to look like. And that's pretty much all that is left. Um, everything else is done. The buttonholes are done. Um, most of the uh, ends are woven in. I've got one or two left that were just um, uh, plied in the middle of a of a row. Uh, kind of spit ply, but I always always have little ends sticking out that I then weave in. I want to make it extra secure, and um, that's about it really. Then just hand stitch this. I use blanket stitch for that, and what I use instead of the wool of the cardigan or anything else, I use a slightly thicker than normal sewing thread for that, and then in blanket stitch. So I've happened to have a nice thick finishing thread. It's almost a little bit waxy. I have no idea. I think it might be very, very old. Um, but that's what I'm using to um, blanket stitch the um, edges of my ribbon on. And then that's it. Then I can pretty much keep it for autumn because it's already too warm to wear at the moment, but that's fine. Um, and, um, of course, I forgot to bring it in, but I've already sneakily started a new project uh, made in a four ply linen cotton blend that I think uh, it is that I bought um, from Tribe Yarns. Um, I wanted to try an alternative to the 100% linen yarn that I have. And I figured that if I'm um, knitting a, a, a short top that I had found on Ravelry that I really, really liked the look of, then rather than completely rewriting it for a different gauge, I'll try and find a yarn that matches the gauge of the pattern. And that um, yarn worked a treat. So I've just started knitting that. I'll bring it in at the next episode to show my work in progress. Um, and that, uh, as, an, as an experience, I just wanted to try and see how it compares to, like I said, 100% linen yarn. I expected the yarn to be softer and easier to work with and to me it actually does not make any difference at all whether I'm working with a pure linen yarn or a linen and cotton blend so that's an interesting learning curve um, and that really boldens my resolve to um, knit more garments with my fine linen yarn um, either held together with a different yarn or knit by itself I've been doing some swatches of holding um, my three ply linen with uh, fiber spades cumulus which of course is also a three ply yarn so in terms of of weight it's got the same running length 600 meters per 100 grams so that's an interesting one to try but i've also got my eye on a new yuck blend yarn that is finer and that would should also go really well held together with the linen but I'm racing ahead. That's not where I am at the moment. That's just future knitting dreams. I promise to show you my work in progress that I just started the uh, linen and cotton blend next time and um, should also be able to show the final finished, finished version of this lush little cardigan. So that's it for now. Um, for those of you who are waiting on a knitted version of the um, uh, crochet phone bag. I haven't forgotten about it. Nearly done with the sample and then I can take photographs and 
write up that pattern and release that. So there will be a knitted version of the phone bag. Um, I do promise it's just slow going with everything else that's going on. And uh, I have found that um, I find it a lot easier um, with that yarn and uh, with the linen stitch to knit during the daytime on that phone bag. And I don't have a lot of daytime knitting time available at all. When I knit, it tends to be later on at night and that's not the time to work on the little phone bag. So that's a bit of a background as to what's holding things up and why is that phone bag not already there? It is coming, I promise. So that's it for knitting this time. I haven't got anything more to show. Like I said, more next time. And all that um, leaves me to say is here we go with layer cake and I hope you enjoy. Layer cake dusters, here they are. Still without pockets, but with a closure and a new length. As you can see, we've taken a leaf out of the book of the Joy Jacket, which of course has got a closure with ties like this, and figured that actually, out of personal experience, if I just throw over my long duster, and this is one of the long ones on me at five foot ten. Of course, I'm going to show you the others as well. And I throw it over um, a bathing suit. It would be rather handy to just quickly close it, not completely wear it as a dress, but as a proper throw over that I then don't have to hold close or put um, any form of tie around. So two ties, sets of ties, just like with the joy jacket, which of course gives you multiple ways of closing it. As I had it here, closing the inner ties and then closing the outer ties makes for a very neat little double piece in the middle where it's just the width of the facing that we have given the inside that overlaps. And that's just enough to just close up the front like you see here or wear it over like a play suit or a dress. I'm going to show you that in a minute as well, closed rather than open. But of course, there is the option as well to close it by just grabbing the ties in the middle. And that way you don't have the overlap like this. And of course, it creates that nice elongated silhouette by having a band of whatever you're wearing underneath in the middle showing. And depending on what kind of color you're wearing underneath, that may be something that you want to highlight like this and create a highlight of the color that you're wearing underneath. For example, if you've got a very bright combination, we'll have a look at that as well. But here's number one, the charcoal cross weave. And this is not the heavier charcoal cross weave. We actually have charcoal cross weave in the lighter linen as well. So this is the summer weight of the charcoal cross weave. In this particular uh, duster offer, we have three summer weight fabrics. This one, magenta and the chartreuse. And then the large, bright large check that you see right next to me here is the heavier linen. And that's therefore only available in the short and the medium length. If we use that heavy linen for a long duster, it really becomes rather weighty and it becomes turns more into a coat, which is a different garment altogether. So we're restricting the length of that to just the short and the medium length. And with all of them, you can choose whether you want these ties or whether you want us to leave them off. The option is yours and you can make that choice when you order them. So. I've rattled through lots of information at the start. Let me show you some more of them. So here's the short one, again with the ties closed in the charcoal. As you can see in the back, it still amply covers my bum. In the front, it just covers my tummy. And now we've got that in-between length. I'll take you through to that straight away. I'm sure you're curious to see it and how it compares to the other two. 
Uh, one other thing to highlight, I forgot to say that I'm wearing my play suit here in the undyed linen and of course undyed linen together with that charcoal and those simple lines of the garments give it this very clean and clear and sophisticated look which you don't lose when you're starting to wear colour but the emphasis when you wear these calm colours is very much as you can see on the shapes. Here comes the in-between length. And here it is. I thought, you know what? The fastest way I can show you the difference is to put them on top of each other. So I've got the two that I've showed you just before in the charcoal, the short and the long, and I've put the medium length in between. And as you can see, it's literally in between the other two. So that goes all the way around. The length of the sleeves and everything is all identical. It's purely that hemline that we've dropped in between the two hemlines of the other lengths. So in terms of where this sits, it's kind of middle of the thigh in front for me. And then in, at the back, it's like low thigh, not quite in uh, to the, 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 the back of my knee, but it's getting closer, as you can see. Of course, I am uh, taller. So what you might find is if you've got a shorter frame, then you may find that whereas you uh, maybe have experienced or are of the opinion that the long length would swamp you a little bit, that medium length might be the perfect length for you. And of course, I'm going to show it without all these layers. So let me drop the two charcoals and just show you what the uh, magenta looks like by itself on top of my play suit. So here it is by itself, that medium length, and you can see how it sits in relation to the pockets on my play suit. It pretty much, the shortest length is pretty much the bottom of my play suit pocket on me. Of course, I am wearing one of the long length play suits. And you can see the difference of the impression that the duster makes without having ties. So this is one of the medium lengths without ties. So this is still on a, that very neutral color. Let me bring in the bright and of course, which other color to show you this with than the blood orange. Here it comes. There it is, blood orange play suit and then the medium length duster in magenta without ties. And this is what I mean with, you know, creating that elongating strip in the middle that goes all the way down. And even with these bright colors, like I like to say with layer cake, bright, but not loud. It never screams. It just sings and it shines at you. So let me show you the longer length on the play suit, because of course, my um, silhouette is a bit elongated because of my height. So if you're wearing the um, regular length play suit with the medium length um, duster, then it may look a little bit more on you like the long length play suit does with the long duster on me. I'll show you. So long duster with ties but worn open just to compared to what you just saw with the medium length. Long duster, long play suit, worn open, and then, of course I can close it. One tie on the inside, just like the joy jacket. One tie on the outside, just to create that slightly different silhouette and really put the emphasis on that undulating, lovely undulating hemline, going all, dipping all the way down in the back. So, of course, more colors. This was the magenta. I'll keep zipping through them. I won't make this all too long. I just, a couple of silhouettes that I want to show you. Uh, Tulip dress, for example, with the duster will be coming up as well. But first, next color, let me put on the medium length large bright check. So for those of you curious to see what the large bright check and the blood orange look like together, here it is. 
there is definitely, it might be in the back of this one, there's definitely a very bright orange check on this fabric that is virtually identical to the blood orange color combination. And I like, oh, this is a similar one as well. So there's more than one actually. You can go a bit lighter like it is here. So there are different, different squares in there that go beautifully with the blood orange. And it makes for a very, very different combination than just going for the blood orange with the magenta like you just saw. So I keep going. I'll change this for the next color that I wanted to show you because it's such a difficult color to represent in photographs. And that is the rivulet. Here it comes. Rivulet with the large bright check. And as you can see with some of the uh, squares in here, again, there are very similar squares to the rivulet color. But the most important thing is that rivulet is not as light as it comes across in some of the photographs. It is a little pig to photograph, I must tell you. It is a cross weave of the blue that is in magpie so that really really dark beautiful blue with a like a duck egg blue uh, color that is the same color that is in um, sweet pea sweet pea is this light soft duck egg blue and that is shot with um, a lilac color and this is that same color blue but then shot with the blue of magpie and you end up with a very, very different color fabric, as you can see. But of course, the two go wonderfully together. So um, in terms of silhouette, you can see a little bit better here with the regular length of the play suit that I'm wearing and then the medium length of the duster, how those proportions change and how they are more similar to what the long duster and the long play suit do when I wear those together. So let me show you this same play suit, but then with a short duster in the large check with the ties again. Short duster, rivulet play suit. As you can see with the short duster and the pockets of the play suit, when you've just got it hanging down at just over the edge. so super easy access to your pockets. The other thing that I wanted to highlight before I forget, with the um, dusters and um, the other garments that we make out of the large bright check, there are uh, people who are worried about having the bright yellow stripe that I, if I believe is on my back here and having that running on the front of the garment. There's only one garment where you have that yellow stripe running down the front and that's the tulip dress. All the other large bright check garments don't have that bright yellow running in the front. Instead, they'll have the blue on either the left or the right side, but the yellow is only in the front of the tulip dress. It purely has to do with where that yellow stripe is across the width of the fabric and where the blue one is and how we need to lay the different fabrics to use the uh, <laughs> lay the different pattern pieces of the different garments in order to utilize the fabric most efficiently and it's only with the tulip dress that you end up with that uh, bright yellow stripe in front if i'm wrong I'm all, almost all of a sudden I'm thinking of the smock, which we've done in the bright stripe as well, the bright check. If the smock has the yellow running in front, I will put it down here. But moving forward with the love dress and the duster, both specifically, they will never have that yellow stripe running down the front. I hope that that answers some questions and alleviates some concerns. If you're unsure, drop me a line and of course I will um, talk to you about it and send you pictures, examples of pictures if you need them further beyond the, the, the ones that are on the website. But most important thing, dusters, the uh, um, large bright check dusters will not have the large bright <laughs> yellow stripe running down them. <laughs> 
Whoopie doo. Okay, on to the next color. Here we go. So next stage, I wanted to show you a couple of things at the same time. So I'm trying to uh, do them one by one. Firstly, this is uh, spring greens in combination with the large bright check short duster. But rather than wearing it by itself, I've thrown it over my rivulet play suit. And that is, first of all, to show you the length difference and how they play together between a regular length um, tulip dress and a regular length play suit. These are both size twos. I will open this to show a little bit more of them. So size two play suit regular length and size two uh, tulip dress regular length. You can see the difference in length, but most importantly, what I wanted to show you is how those two colors work together. They look beautiful together. Of course, they've got a color in common. They both have that duck egg blue running in them. And then in spring greens, that is shot with the chartreuse. And in rivulet, it's shot with the magpie blue. So wonderful to wear together. But most importantly, you can see the difference between the two and how these two silhouettes work on top of each other. Um, next step, of course, I'm going to show this with the chartreuse of the um, uh, duster. It's not like you can't wear other combinations, but I've tried to go for combinations that are the most obvious ones and that I've been getting the most questions about. But the other thing I'm going to show you is how the duster lengths relate to this dress length. So I'm going to take the play suit off and show you the dress with chartreuse dusters. Here it comes. Regular length, size two regular length dress. Mind you, the dress lengths across the sizes is the same. So um, with the smock and the tabard, a bigger size means a slightly longer garment. With the dresses, that's not the case. So size two regular length dress and the long duster. As you can see, and maybe you remember from when I showed you these before, the back of the length of the duster is virtually identical, maybe just a tad longer than the dress length. So that gives you an idea of those proportions. Of course, I'll show you the other duster lengths as well, but I wanted to start with this one because you can see how they relate to each other and how they work together. Of course, you can then go for the different way of tying by tying them like this. Of course, you can leave it loose altogether. But of course, if you tie it like this, you get the green or whichever color dress you're wearing running underneath the duster and creating that elongating silhouette. On to the next one. Medium length duster in the magenta without ties, this time still with the spring greens dress in the regular length. So you can see how they relate to each other. Of course, you see a lot more of the skirt part of the dress underneath. Very different look. Of course, the colors are very different as well. But the main thing to show you here are, well, first of all, how these two colors play with each other, but how the proportions and the silhouette changes with a different length of duster. Now, you may be a petite dress length wearer, so of course I'm going to show you a petite length dress as well with the medium length duster, etc, etc. Here it comes. I've thrown the medium length uh, large bright check duster over the top of the uh, bitter lime petite dress that I'm wearing on top of the spring greens regular length dress. So that shows you the difference in dress length between a petite and a regular. They're both size twos. And it also shows you how wonderful the large bright check is with bitter lime. If anybody was in doubt, here they are together, beautiful. And it shows you how the petite dress length and the medium length of the duster relate to each other. So as you can see, the back of the medium length duster is identical to the length of the petite length dress. So that kind of silhouette and the level of coverage 
that you get of your petite length dress when you wear it with a medium length duster is the same as what you get with a regular length dress and a long duster. I hope that's making sense. Let me show you a short duster as well with this outfit. So here you can see that chartreuse and bitter lime really love each other as well. And you can see how the short duster length relates to the petite length of the tulip dress. Still have the medium length in the spring greens underneath. These colors all play very nicely together. Well, you can see that there as well, the um, mannequin that's wearing the chartreuse shirt uh, right next to the um, spring green play suit. So opening it up for a slightly different look. What do we think? If you want me to um, show any other combinations of garments together, um, I haven't gone into trousers, etc., because I thought I'm giving you a bit of an idea of that with the play suit. Having said that, maybe a pair of palazzos with a medium length um, duster. That sounds like a good idea. Let me put it together for you now. Off piste as I always go, but I have to show you. I'm curious myself. Here it comes. I kept the uh, dress on. I'll take it off in a minute. It's just to show you that a petite length tunic dress is a tulip dress is a bit of a tunic on me because it's just about knee length. I'm wearing it with a pair of palazzo trousers in the extra large long length just to show you that um, you can wear the palazzas relatively oversized as well. The most obvious size for me with my bum being like a UK size 18 would be to go for um, the uh, large size in the palazzos, but the extra large was just more room to move and just more space around the waist really goes quite well too. So um, as I always say with layer cake, we try to give you the option to size up and in some cases size down for a different silhouette. And that definitely goes for the palazzos. You are very likely to go up one size without feeling that they drown you unless you're really used to wearing a more fitted and uh, slim silhouette. Because of course, oversized trousers are not going to give you a slim silhouette. Right, what I wanted to show you, two things. First of all, the medium length duster with the palazzos. And I'm going to change this tunic to more of a regular top length to show you uh, the impact of the duster length without having the addition of this tulip shape, because of course that really changes the effect that the trousers have on the whole outfit. But I also wanted to show you the combination of magenta and um, bitter lime. I think this is a wonderful color combination together. What do you think? Let me know, of course. But now I'm going to change this into a top to show you the effect of the medium length duster a bit better in combination with the palazzos. Actually, even though I hadn't planned this, I'm happy to be doing this now because the um, uh, love tunic that uh, I had easy access to is a size two in magenta. So I've teamed that now with the medium length uh, duster, also in magenta. And as you can see, still the, the palazzo. So medium length duster with this outfit the front of the medium length duster is only a tad longer than the uh, front of the um, love tunic. And this is how they relate in the back. I'm also going to throw on the short duster and the long duster. Again, so you can see how these lengths relate to each other. I hope this is helpful. Hadn't planned this, but looks rather useful to me. Short charcoal duster with the love tunic. So you can see what happens with these hemlines. 
They go wonderful together, of course. I'll tie this up so you can see that silhouette as well. I thought rather than sticking with all the very bright colors, let's calm it down a little bit with the charcoal. Such a beautiful basic, which of course goes with so many different colors because it is so neutral and really emphasizes the duster silhouette over the top in this case of a bright love tunic. I'm going to grab the long duster as well to finish this section. I hope you find it useful. Long duster, chartreuse, chartreuse and bitter lime, wonderful together, chartreuse and magenta, wonderful together. Nice and bright and very happy outfit this. I hope you agree. I hope you found this useful. Any questions, please ask. And of course, as always, I'll see you again soon.